apologies, indefinite leave to remain, the last visa, indefinite leave to remain, for anybody watching this, this is like the trophy on top of a hill, this is a point where you're just clambering up the hill and you're grabbing hold of the trophy because once you've done indefinite leave to remain, it's all over. The bureaucracy, to a degree, comes to an end. And anyone who's followed, me and Melissa, who's followed our channel, you have seen our struggle with visas, going from the very first entry clearance, permission to enter the country, and then get married, switching from a fiancé visa to a spouse visa, and then two and a half years later, doing an extension, which is leave to remain. And basically, at the end of five long years, you can claim indefinite leave to remain. And then it's done. And you can rest. And look at the five years journey to my eyes. <laughs> but I wanted to do something about indefinite leave to remain. So, yeah. Melissa came into this country back in, wow, September 2017 on a fiancé visa, aka entry clearance. We got married and she got her first proper visa, the start of the five years, in January 2018. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. In January of 2023, we were eligible to do indefinite leave to remain, the fifth year visa, and we didn't. And it's now May. And you might think, hang on a second, you could have done it in January. Why are you leaving it till May? Simply because for some reason when they last did a visa, they kind of gave her longer than she needed. They kind of give her till August. So although she could apply for indefinite leave to remain in January, her visa doesn't run out till August. So we've only got around to doing it now in May because we've been super busy. We've had just family dynamics and family dramas. So anyway, that aside, it's May and we've done indefinitely to remain. We actually, well, I'll say we're done. We're like right bang in the middle of it. That's why I'm doing this video. Uh, so let me walk and talk you through so far where we're at. But I will say, out of all the visas I've done, it's the easiest. They've asked for the least amount of stuff. They've not asked for marriage certificates because they've had it like four times already. They've not actually asked for a lot of stuff. So I'm going to show you where we're at. Bearing in mind, I don't want to show you like personal information. So I've, I don't want to start blurring the screen out and messing about because I don't have time. So indefinitely to remain. Let's begin. So if you literally Google indefinite leave to remain family visa. So I'm talking about your, your UK guy and you've married a lovely girl from the Philippines or whatever, Thailand, Vietnam. Indefinite leave to remain family visa. And basically, in a nutshell, your requirements for like in the case of me and Melissa, Five years, you're still married, you've lived together for five years, between you, you earn 18,600, more if you've got children, so that'll be an addition to the 18,600, but case in point, me and Melissa, 18,600, um, you've also done the life in uk test and passed it see my previous videos the importance of doing and passing that test don't even go near this until you've done that life in uk test that's why it's e it's important sorry hit that test early get it passed and then meet the english requirements which is your b1 again see previous videos so we're coming at this going, yes, we've lived together for five years. Yes, we earn over 18,600. Yes, Melissa's passed the life in the UK test. Yes, she's passed the B1. Done. And you can literally apply from here. And when you, when you apply, 
you um, do it all online and it loads up a screen where it'll ask for a lot of similar information as it has before name address date of birth national insurance number where you live now where you've lived together in the last few or five years if the address has changed the basic standard stuff that they've asked you on previous videos which you'll definitely have the information for also i found they also ask for things like expired brp numbers any other home office numbers that might just might help them identify you and go smoothly through the application financial information where you work how much money you make um the standard stuff that you've um you've given them in the past it's the same same answers like just on that point the last visa i did leave to remain i saved the application so for indefinitely to remain i literally use cut copy and paste the same answers i use for leave to remain i copied them i pasted them straight into indef it was so easy i it was filling the forms was the easiest one i've done it took me about an hour i've literally gone copy paste copy paste national insurance number date of birth home office reference numbers where you work how much you earn repeated all the same stuff as before and once you filled it in check it over make sure it's sweet you hit submit there's no nhs surcharge now that's gone you hit submit and we paid two thousand four hundred and four pounds two thousand four hundred and four pounds that is as of may 2023 so that and it was actually the same last year they've not increased it so you filled in the form you paid the money what happens next so without trying to divulge too much personal information it then goes to uk vcas so you're asked to then create an account with these guys and from there you do two simple things and as if by magic so the two things are you book your appointment for your bios so your bios i'm assuming are going to be like last time they're going to be fingerprints they're going to be a photograph and we booked it at manchester obviously i'll upload this video after the 27th of may because otherwise you can all be waiting outside going hey robert mel we love you we love you you know <laughs> i know it's not going to happen but anyway you book your bios the second thing you do is you upload your documents and you can add extra services should you wish now they are things like we will check your documents for you but we'll charge you whatever 100 pounds personally i never bother with these because i'm confident that i can do this alone so you booked you're all set you've now got your time before the 27th of may to upload the documents so uploading the documents, you can see I've uploaded 73 files. And when you go and look at them, again, it's trying to add extra services. So it's saying, hey, add document check and checking. It's only £50 per applicant. If you want to do that, you do that. But that's not for me. That's something I to skip because I'm quite, I feel confident to do it myself. So on the evidence aspect, it's looking for the proof of the application and is giving you further categories is going over residents in the uk finances proof of businesses life events medical information blah 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 these are categories that you can place your files into so for an example of the evidence proof of application uploaded files you will see that i have submitted entry clearance old entry clearance stamps b1 pass results of english tests life in the uk test new passport old passport on a declaration signed by me and then in other categories so for example other i might put things like united utilities letters um pension paperwork anything that i feel is relevant to the application 
but the bulk of the files uploaded as you'll see the 40 files are in finances and finances will obviously cover bank statements savers statements uh six way slips so i've uploaded seven because i just like to go a bit above and beyond letter from the employer bank statements the whole nine yards it's all uploaded within there and so far i've submitted um 70 odd files so for us we are literally just waiting on the bios to be done and as it says there it says you're you're all you've sent your spawn documents to ukvi you're all set for your appointment so that's the kind of next priority so let's let's just take it from there British citizenship. British? Next yeah. one is the citizenship. And then I'm going on it. I swear allegiance <laughs> to King Charles. I'm going to King Charles. <laughs> <laughs> well done, babe. Thank you. So just after we did that, even just before she came out of the building, we got an email basically saying, submitted, done. Just sit back and wait. So I don't know how long that takes. How long does it take about? They say six months, but some it, people it depends on uh, you know processing department or handle yeah. my papers like that yeah because some some of them like four weeks four so, weeks yeah. that's quick but they say six months before. so yeah. some of them like two months it, it depends on who is handling your paperwork so they mm. don't know well at least yeah. we're done now so yeah submitted got an email saying Thanks very much, everything's submitted and we just gotta wait. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> 